Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at something very simple, but also important. And that is allowing people to register and log in to your application using Zitadel. In this video, we'll take a look at doing that with multiple methods, username and password, pass keys, and we'll give you an idea of some of the other options that are available by exploring the Zetadel console. Let's dive right in. So here we are on our Zetadel Cloud Zetadel console. Nothing has changed since our previous video. We still have a project with the Rockwood Academy project here. We can click on it and you'll see the Astro example from the previous video and a React one from the PKCE video and I still can't say that. What's important today is we're going to dive into the default settings of our Zetadel instance because we want to take a look at the different identity providers and authentication methods. If we click on identity providers, you'll see that there are no third party setups here. We're not doing Google, not doing GitHub or anything like that. However, we can click on GitHub, for instance, where we can get the client ID and secret to drop in here. Of course, this kind of setup is extremely important when you're running your own Zetadel because more often it is important to piggyback on to an existing authentication provider. We'll be looking at that in the next video. So when you're done with this one, just scroll below and get started. Well, we're going to start a lot simpler today, and that is... How can we just allow people to log in with their username and password? Not only that, can we allow passwordless, passkey-based login? Fortunately for us, the answer is yes. By default, passwordless login is enabled and it does support fingerprint security keys, face ID and others. So pretty much everything that we need to get started with passkeys. We have some multi-factor settings. We can force that for all local users or all users in general, but we'll come back to this when we take a look at enterprise patterns in the future. You can then configure the password checks, the lifetimes for secrets, and then a whole bunch of settings down the bottom for what type of logins and registrations to allow. As you can see here, I have allowed username and passwords. Gotcha. This isn't on by default, so you will need to enable this for your new Zetadel Cloud or self-hosted instance. Not only that, you'll need to check that user, that user registrations are also allowed. We'll disable that for a moment just so we can see it on my other container uh, where, we'll, where we can see the actual login form that we will use to log in and register. We're going to disable external login because we're not using that for this video and we'll hit save. Now over here, I have a Firefox container tab where I'm not logged into the Zetadel instance. I could type in an email address like so, where it tells me the user cannot be found. We can click register, where we can fill in a nice simple form to say that I am David Flanagan, and I'll just use an address that I know isn't gonna break the system and a demo password that I use all the time. We accept the terms of service and the privacy policy. We now need to confirm our email address. So I'll jump over here and grab the code, like so. We can click next. We can choose to set up a second factor. We'll take a look at this in just a moment. For now, we're going to hit skip. And here we are. This is now my new user profile using the Zetadel console. So far, we haven't integrated with our own application or provide any bespoke arbitrary login styles of our own. I can come into here where I can change my password. We can add a password list authentication method, which we'll do in just a moment. And I can add a second factor. If I had other identity providers configured, such as Google or GitHub, that we'll see in a subsequent video, I can also connect my accounts here. 
We can see authorizations to see if I have access to anything above standard privileges, which I do not, and I have no memberships either. There's also the ability to add custom metadata, although this has to come from a top down. And we'll take a look at using metadata and user schemas, and again, subsequent videos. We have a lot to cover in this course. So let's go to password and security. We can now say, let's add a method. And I can choose to use my own device and I give it a name. I'm going to store this passkey to my one password. Here we can see that I can create a new one, save it to my vault, and we'll hit refresh. And now we have our passkey. I can also add a second factor, which could be a FIDO key, or we can have it scan our QR code. Like so. Really, really is that simple. And again, I haven't shipped a single byte of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. This is all provided by the Zeradel console. We can now log out and click sign in again. Now it remembers that I have been here before and I can log in with passwordless like so. I really love it when things are just that simple and just work. Now, this is where we see which of you were paying attention. Did you see what just happened? Let's take a closer look. If we head back over to the console, you'll remember that just a moment ago we were configuring this, these configuring. Just a moment ago, we were configuring these settings and we actually disabled user registration. However, we also just registered a user. And I'm pointing this out because this is something that tripped me up more than once when I started adopting Zeradel 18 months ago. When I came to the settings page, I came to the default settings. This is your instance-wide settings that apply to all organizations when they have nothing set themselves or they inherit from the instance. That means if we click back here, go to organizations, click on login and access, like so, we still have no identity providers. But if we click on our login behavior and security and scroll down, you'll see that user registration is still allowed. Username and password is allowed. External login is allowed. These settings are very different to what we have configured at the default instance level. Now, if we turn off user registration and log out, our register button is gone. That's just something to bear in mind. There's default instance-wide settings and each organization can be configured independently in isolation on its own. That's three ways of saying the exact same thing, but I hope it gets the point across. Now, I do want to take a look at one more setting before we wrap this up. And to do that, we are going to go back to default settings. This is an instance-wide configuration. We can go to features and scroll down to the bottom where we will see that we have access to login v2. Now, we're not going to take a look at it in this video, but we will in two videos time. So again, scroll down a few and you'll see the link. So far, when we've been taking a look at creating users and registering users, we've been doing it from the Zeradel console. And that's great for getting started and providing something out of the box. But you may want something that integrates more natively with your application. User login v2 is the way to do that. It hooks in to the Zeradel session API. They provide a TypeScript project that you can fork and maintain on your own, or you can use the session API directly from your own application. There's a lot to cover in that video, so make sure you set some time to watch that soon. So that's it for this video. We've taken a look at registering an account with a username and password, logging out, logging back in, 
and then add in some other authentication methods. We add either passkey and multi-factor authentication via a TOTP within my 1Password vault. Join us for the next video as we take a look at hooking our Zutterdell up to GitHub for OIDC authentication. We'll see you next time.